it's me I'm back um, today I'm just gonna do an update on my life everything that's new everything that's going on um, I'm also just gonna share um, some personal struggles of mine um, like with self-image and all of that um, so I hope that you enjoy uh, today's vlog and keep watching! I'd also like to just say thank you so much for everybody who watched um, my first video, my first vlog. Um, it has almost reached 26,000 views, um, which is amazing. I never thought that it would get to that point. Um, and I'd also like to thank everyone for all the positive comments that they left on that video. Um, they were all really encouraging. So thank you so much for watching that and for giving me your feedback. So, obviously a few things have changed with me um, since my last vlog. Um, for instance, I got new glasses. See? Yay! Um, um, I wear glasses because I'm slightly blind, um, <laughs> and um, I decided to go with these ones because they're kind of bright and funky, and I've never had bright glasses before. Um, my, bef my The ones I had before were actually black, so these are definitely a big step of brightness, and I actually really like them. And then my second is my hair. I got a perm which I'm really happy with. Um, it's a lot easier to take care of, definitely. I don't even have to comb my hair. And uh, I also got my ears pierced. I um, decided not to be a wuss and to actually go and do it. <laughs> um, and that's just, that's the only reason why I haven't gotten them done before is because I'm a wuss and I really don't like pain, so. <laughs> um, and I was actually an even bigger wuss and put numbing cream on my ears before I did the ear piercing and then I actually did cry. Um, I don't think that it was because um, it hurt because it actually didn't hurt. Um, it was just because I was just I was so nervous and stressed out before it happened, and then as soon as it happened, I was like, "Oh, I'm done," and I cried. Yeah, it was pathetic. And my sisters got my embarrassment on video. Yay! Which I'm not going to share with you because it's really embarrassing. So the final thing that um, is new with me. Um, and I'm going to show you in a second, um, but I um, recently was in a seating clinic um, to get my wheelchair adjusted and all of that, um, and they decided that they wanted to try a new seating system with me. Um, so they decided to go with this seating system called Ride. Um, some of you may have heard of it. I've never actually been through it before. Um, it's very interesting, actually. Um, and it's just basically a thinner, smaller version of a seating system that I've had before. Um, and it's actually, I'm really liking it now. Um, when I first got it, though, um, I'm going to show you in a second what it looks like, but um, it sort of restricts my movements from side to side. So unfortunately I had to give up piano um, because I can't actually move side to side anymore. And I found like everyday activities a little bit harder to do like writing and typing on the computer and all that. Um, so I was a little bit frustrated with it to begin with. Um, but now I find it really awesome. I actually like it a lot. Um, it's completely gotten rid of my back pain. Uh, I don't hardly ever have back pain anymore um, and it's just because it supports me so nicely. And the thing I really appreciate about it, um, and you'll see in a minute, uh, is that it's so small that when you look at me from the front you can't even see it. Um, and I appreciate that so much because um, before my seating system was huge and black and that was like the first thing that you see when you would look at me was the seating system. Um, and I always struggled with that. 
So um, just having this smaller system um, has been fantastic. I love it. Um, and although I had some struggles with it, um, like when we finally got it and got it installed in my wheelchair, it took us seriously um, a full day. And that means from like 8 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock at night to um, adjust it because it has, it's kind of on a rotating head so you can like loosen it off and move it exactly where you want it to be and then tighten it back up. Um, so I had struggles with that just trying to figure out where I wanted it and it seriously took all day and by the end of it I was frustrated and crying um, but we finally got it figured out and it's been good. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this is basically what it looks like from the front it is my seating system. You can't see it at all which is perfect. And then from the side you can see that it's just really small um, and it supports me quite well but it holds my sides in quite a bit. Um, which helps with me leaning over from, because of my back curvature. So I find it great right now and I'm really enjoying it. So besides all of the stuff that has been happening with me physically, all the new things, um, I have a new exciting thing that um, I am working on right now. Um, I think that I mentioned it before in one of my blogs before um, but I'll just remind all of you guys um, I have for two years been working on getting an adaptive snow program up to our ski hill here um, an adaptive ski program is basically where um, people with disabilities can um, experience skiing um, in new ways and we have special equipment like um, sit skis and um, other equipment to support um, every kind of disability. Um, so for the past two years I've been working on building up my own program because um, current, uh, before um, our ski hill did not have a, any sort of program. So um, I've been working very, very hard with that, and um, I'm happy to say that um, last January, our adaptive snow program for our ski hill officially opened. Um, it took a lot of work and a lot of perseverance. Um, it was frustrating at times, and other times it was really great, and um, I've just been honored to be a part of the process and I'm so thankful now that we have this program at our ski hill that will hopefully never close um, and last se ski season has just been fabulous I was able to go skiing every Sunday which sort of uh, calm down my uh, winter I'm going crazy because I haven't been outside in two weeks uh, thing so I am really thankful to be a part of that whole thing, that whole process, and um, I'm actually the president of uh, the society that runs the Sitski pro or the adaptive program, um, which I personally never thought I would that, that would ever happen to me. <laughs> what sixteen year old thinks that? Uh, they're going to be a president president of a society. I don't know. <laughs> so it's been a learning process for me. I've had a lot of struggles, but um, like I said, it's just been very, it's character building and this helped me to mature. And I've had so many different opportunities that go along with this, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but I just wanted to uh, let you guys know that because it's just something really special that's happened in my life and um, I just think that it's so fabulous to have this adaptive program now 
So my adoptive snow program has kind of been top notch on my life right now. Um, I still work on it, of course, because um, I'm the president of the society, so I still always have stuff to do with it. Um, but besides that, I've had quite the busy summer, actually. Um, believe it or not, I actually went to Las Vegas, and boy do I have a lot to say on that. Um, it was an awesome experience, but it was also um, kind of a trying experience. Um, so I'm going to explain all of that. So the reason I went to Las Vegas was because um, I was there for a conference with uh, for people with my disability, arthrogryposis, and there's a link in the description for kind of um, a definition of arthrogryposis in case you guys want to know what it's uh, all about and all of that. So um, I went to this conference for people with my disability. There was about 500 there this time. Um, they happen every year usually all across the globe. The last time I went there was, uh, I went to, it was in Florida, so I went to uh, Florida to have the conference there, and that was, I think it was in 2010, so um, when we heard that it was in Vegas, we decided that we might as well go down. Um, we actually drove over, it was about 19 hours. Um, we didn't do it all in one day, no way. <laughs> um, so that was an interesting thing, um, driving down there. Uh, I don't actually have a problem with driving because I sit on my butt for how many hours a day anyway, so driving doesn't really make a difference, but for my family it was a little bit harder. And the only reason that we drove down was because um, usually with flights, um, something on my wheelchair ends up being broken because the people that put the wheelchair in the airplane um, are very careless with it and just throw it in there kind of and tie it down they don't even really care um, and I don't think I've ever been on a flight where they haven't broken my wheelchair in some way or another um, which is pretty sad actually um, because people don't actually realize that this is my only way of getting around and if it, if it breaks then I can't do anything um, so we just decided that we didn't want to take that risk, and so we um, decided to fly down instead. The conference itself was incredible. It was really fun. Um, I always enjoy being able to socialize with um, my peers and people who know what I'm going through, so um, I always really appreciate that experience. Um, and we didn't actually go to the Strip in Vegas, and for two reasons. Um, it was super hot, it was about 120 degrees, so I'm not used to that. Um, and it was just, we couldn't even step outside without feeling like we were going to melt away. It was that hot. Um, so, and the other reason was uh, that we didn't go to the Strip was because um, there was a Golden Gloves boxing tournament on, and apparently it was just a madhouse downtown because of um, because of it. It was so busy, and uh, if you know what I'm going through, um, walking down the street when it's crowded and you're in a wheelchair is super hard, mainly because people don't actually look where they're going. And when I try to say excuse me, I seriously have to scream it because people don't ever hear me. Um, and it's kind of annoying, so we just decided that we didn't really need to see the strip anyway, and um, we just enjoyed staying at the air-conditioned hotel, um, which was actually a fabulous hotel. It was a five-star resort hotel, and it was just um, super awesome for accommodating us. And uh, the room was actually super, really big and really perfect for my wheelchair, so um, we just really enjoyed our stay there. Um, and I actually don't mind that I didn't go to the strip. I'd rather not see that stuff anyway. Um, so I'm just going to share some of my happy moments with being in America and some of my sad moments being in America. Um, so good thing, positive thing, um, which I really appreciated uh, because we were driving down to Las Vegas. Um, of course we had to stop and use the bathroom lots and um, 
normally going to bathrooms that I don't know of kind of terrifies me because um, here uh, the bathroom stalls usually are not big enough. Um, so I always have to wait until I know of a restaurant or something like that that I know usually has big bathrooms. Um, so actually when we were in America, there was not one bathroom that I could not fit into. All the bathrooms were huge and uh, had ample space for my wheelchair and my mum and I didn't actually hit my head on anything which is amazing. Um, <laughs> so I really really appreciated uh, that and that just took a huge stress load off of me and my mother so um, that was just something that I appreciated. Um, but after we um, were finished with the conference, we went over to the Hoover Dam um, to go and have a look at that. And I think that was my most disappointing moment was being at the Hoover Dam. I was the most disappointed with that um, because, number one, there was um, you have to go into these parking lots and then you have to take an elevator down to the main part um, where you can go to the Hoover Dam. Um, and w one of the elevators was broken, so there was only one elevator. And, um, people are just so rude. I was standing at the elevator, standing right at the door. Um, and as soon as the door opened, everybody just flooded in there, didn't even look to see that I was trying to get in there, and able-bodied people that could, are more than capable of walking down the stairs were just rushing into like skipping ahead of line and getting in the elevator and by the time I tried to get in it, the elevator was full so it took me about 15 minutes to 20 minutes just to get in the elevator and go down to the main floor um, so I was so frustrated with that um, because honestly if you're able-bodied you do not need to use an elevator if you are capable of walking down the stairs, walk down the stairs. Um, because I obviously needed the elevator and I had to wait 15 minutes to get into it. And the elevator is made for me, for people with disabilities who need an elevator. Um, so I was just super frustrated with that. And then we got down there, we got over to the Hoover Dam and seriously, more people were looking at me than they were at the Hoover Dam. And I'm not talking about just kids. Like, I can handle kids staring at me because I know that they don't know any better and um, my chair must be a mystery to them. But when adults stare at me, like openly stare at me, that's when I get frustrated because they should definitely know better. Um, and I just really did not enjoy the Hoover Dam experience. I went and I looked um, for like five minutes and then I just said, Mom, I'm really not happy with this. I want to go home. I want to go back to the car because I just did not like it. Um, so I was really disappointed with that um, and it was really unfortunate that it had to be like that. Um, so that was my experience at the Hoover Dam. After that, we went over to the Grand Canyon. We drove over to, to the Grand Canyon. Um, and that experience was a little bit better. Um, it wasn't so crowded. And of course, the Grand Canyon is huge. So um, you there's plenty of space for me to get around without having to bump into somebody. Um, and I didn't find that people were staring at me at um, well, not too many, at least, at uh, the Grand Canyon. So I really enjoyed my experience at the Grand Canyon, actually. Um, we stayed there for, I think, two days. Um, and it was really nice. I really, um, it's a beautiful, the Grand Canyon is gorgeous. You don't even really know what to expect, and then you go out and look at it, and it's like, wow. Um, and then we drove home, so that was my vacation to the States. Um, so it was filled with good and bad, um, but I overall I was really happy with the vacation because 
I had a really tough school year and I just needed to unwind and take a break. So it served its, its purpose and um, I was really happy to be able to relax. So to add to my busy summer, my sister got married the week after that I got back from Vegas. Um, her ceremony was beautiful and it was just an awesome time of celebration. And then about two weeks um, after that, I went over to the Easter Seals camp, um, Camp Winfield. So it's basically just a camp for people with disabilities and um, it lasts a whole week. You have caretakers that look after you for the whole week and the parents can just go um, and relax and take a break for a little while. Um, and I always enjoy Camp Winfield. Um, it's such an awesome environment, really positive and um, really special. Um, it's special, that's all I can all I can say about it. Um, I can't even really say what was my favorite part because everything's just fantastic. Um, but this was my last year at Camp Winfield. Um, so I just wanted to do a little shout out and say thank you to everyone who, all the counselors and the coordinators and the programmers and to the people who maintenance the camp um, because it's just such a fabulous camp and um, you have given me such a wonderful experience and um, have shown me that positive attitudes are the best and um, that I can really do anything that I set my mind to. So thank you everyone from Camp Winfield for making my experience there so special. So now my summer is starting to wind down and I think I have about two weeks left until I um, start school up again. Um, and this is my last year, I'm graduating, yay! I'm so happy um, <laughs> to be done. And uh, I'm really excited for the future. I'm really excited to be able to go off to university. And there are just big, big, big things coming my way. And um, I really am just excited for the future. It's looking really fabulous. And I can't wait to start my life um, in that respect. Um, and I just... I'm so excited, seriously. I can't wait to graduate and um, go off and live life a little bit. So I'm really, I'm just, I have no words. No words. Okay, so um, there's kind of an update on my life and what I've been doing. It's been crazy and um, this summer has just flown by. Um, so now I'm just going to talk a little bit about some struggles that I've had um, and also give an update on... Um, my first video blog was kind of about pet peeves that people, that, um, annoyed me with people, um, like staring and all of that. So I'm just going to kind of address some of those and, um, how I've been able to overcome those and get through, um, those, um, hard times. So personally, the, there are only a couple of things that, um, I struggle with, um, with myself, my self-image. Um, the first being, um, <laughs> this is kind of funny, um, my feet. Um, my feet are clubbed, so they're kind of curled in a little bit. Um, and the, I always wear socks. <laughs> I always wear socks, you know, even when I'm in the pool or anything like that. Um, because I don't like to show my feet feet bare. Um, that's the only thing that I really can't stand talking about is why my feet are the way that they are because I don't, I don't know, that's, that's just the only thing that kind of irks me is talking about that. Um, so I always wear socks and that's just something that I've struggled with and I haven't really f found out a way to deal with that. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry if you have the same thing that you're that I'm going through. It I have no advice because I really haven't dealt with it yet. Um, and then the second thing that I struggle with is um, when I was four years old, I had a surgery on my leg. Um, so basically, my left leg was um, kind of horizontal. It was curled underneath my right leg. Um, 
And so because of that, I wasn't able to sit down. And the doctors told me that if I ever wanted to sit in a wheelchair, I had to get surgery. Um, so when I was four years old, I got um, something called a rota rotational osteotomy. Um, so what that means is that they basically cut the bone in three places on my left leg, um, and then they rotated it and put it back together with a plate and some screws. Um, so I had that done when I was four years old, and then when I was eight year old, years old, I had the uh, plate and the screws removed from my leg. Um, and because of the surgery, I, of course, have scars along my leg. I have a big one running from my hip down to my knee on the side. And then on my knee, I actually have two kind of parallel lines, um, and then, like, a squiggly line in between. Um, and then I also have, like, a little, like, puncture hole on the side of my knee as well, and then that has also scarred. Um, so normally... And um, I've gotten a little bit better with this now. Um, normally, I usually do not wear shorts in the summertime. Um, I usually wear like longer skirts or um, pants because I don't like to talk about the surgery. It was very traumatic for me and um, has left an impact on me. Um, so I really don't like to share about it. Um, and so I usually cover up that scar because I don't want to, if people ask, I don't want to talk about it. Um, but lately, I've actually started wearing shorts and um, shorter skirts um, because I, I, to be honest, I actually don't care anymore. <laughs> um, I get stared at already, so if people are looking at my scars, I don't really care. Um, so... I don't know if that's really dealing with it, but um, <laughs> um, I just decided that I'm not going to let that bother me anymore. Um, yeah, so if you have scars, I would just say maybe just decide in your mind that you're not going to let it bother you if people ask or look at them. Um, and, and it's actually kind of fun to be like, look at the scar I have, it's huge. And then everybody's like, ooh. So the final thing that I struggle with um, with my self-image is um, the way that I eat. Um, so I actually have to face feed. So I have these like buckets um, that I put on the table and it just basically um, brings my plate up to um, the level of my mouth. And then I basically just eat with my mouth. Um, and I never used to have a problem with it until... I got into school, and <laughs> it sounds terrible, but somebody called me a cow because of the way that I eat, and I don't know, I just, it's like, hey, I kind of do look like a cow, and then um, that just affected me. Um, so normally, um, I don't really eat in front of people. Um, I'll eat in front of people that I know, um, but I won't eat in front of kids um, usually and people that I don't know. I will actually ask my mom just to feed me instead of doing it um, my way because um, it just makes me uncomfortable. And I know I haven't dealt with that either, but I just, that's just, I feel so uncomfortable and like kind of, and I'm an outsider because of the way I eat. So I don't usually um, eat in front of people, and that's just the way that I prefer to have it. Um, and, it and that actually doesn't bother me, the fact that I do that. Um, and all I can, I can't really give you any advice if you eat the same way that I do. Just hopefully nobody's actually called you a cow. Um, <laughs> and... Um, that comment doesn't so much bother me anymore, but I just, I don't know, ever since then, I've just sort of lost confidence in that area. Um, so yeah, but other than that, um, those things, that's basically all that I struggle with, um, with my self-image. Um, and if you struggle with something similar to the things that I do, or maybe you have your own um, struggles, 
all I can really say is that maybe just decide in your mind that you aren't going to let it bother you, what people think about you, and I should really take my own medicine, but, um, and just decide that you, uh, you do these things because you have to, and just because people look at you doesn't mean that you are weird or, um, that you even deserve it, but, um, just decide that it's okay to be different. Um, I just hate how society makes it seem like different is a bad thing. Um, different is not a bad thing. I think different is a good thing. If you can stand out and not be a part of the crowd and not blend in, I think that you are well on your way to success because it's not about blending in with everyone else. It's about standing out and showing how you are unique. You are not like every other robot clone that there is around here. You are, um, you just shine and that's fine and it's not a bad thing if you shine. Um, you're meant to shine and you're meant to show who you really are and not hide it. Um, so there's my little rant about being different but I just say don't change a thing because um, being different is not a bad thing and it makes you unique. So I think that that's going to be it for my video blog today. Maybe I will update um, in the future. But um, I have a new email address which I'm going to put in the description um, and it's actually specifically for um, any questions that you guys might have or if you just want to talk to me you can use that email that I've got in the description to um, talk to me. Um, and please comment and subscribe to my videos. I really love to hear your guys' feedback. Um, and if you want to share some of your personal struggles that you have with self-image, um, please do in the comments or in my email. Um, there's just a little pop-up thing that's going to come up in the corner for my first video blog, so I encourage you to check that out. Um, you can also check out my um, actual physical blog, Disabled and Living in the Real World. I will have that also in the description, um, so make sure that you guys go and check that out because I kind of update that more regularly. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear from you, so make sure that you comment and like and subscribe and do all that fun stuff. So, bye for now, and we will see you next time, Internet. Yay!